Well, the world's best investor, Warren Buffett, has got a lot of excellent advice about life as well. And he says, never do something that will land you on the front page of a newspaper. That's exactly what happened with Gaten McKenzie this past weekend. We'll find out whether he's happy or sad about it. Gaten McKenzie is the leader of the Patriotic Alliance. Uh, and Gaten, interesting to see how popular your keynote was at the Biz News Conference in Hermanus. I, I often get these little notes from uh, your friend Rob Hersoff to say uh, that he's going to overtake you and he's going to be more watched. But I think last, last I looked, 150,000 people have watched it. More than that, they watched it for more than 10 minutes at a time. So uh, your message is getting through. Uh, what isn't, uh, I suppose, as happy, but you need to explain and unpack it for me, is what happened over the weekend. We saw Report newspaper having a full go at you, and then their their colleague City Press, both of which are owned by Naspers, uh, was saying that they got hold of an hour long uh, discussion that you had with a unnamed uh, Democratic Alliance councillor in Saldana and uh, you were trying to bribe him effectively to come across to the PA. So those, that's, uh, that's what the people who read that newspaper believe. So I'm very glad that we have an opportunity to maybe get a little bit of background, but let's just, just, just sketch for us, if you would, what is going on in Saldana? Um, how close is the council in terms of which political parties have got which seats? Right. Let me first start with Saldana, what's happening there. Saldana is, uh, is, is a razor thin. The DA is ruling Saldana with a razor thin majority that includes the that includes two other parties, which is the NCC and a and the Freedom Front Plus. If they lose two of those people, it's over for them in Saldana. So Saldana is a very important municipality for them, and they, and they should be. Uh, I would have been paranoid about losing it. All right. You know, uh, I don't agree with Warren's advice that never find yourself at the front of the newspaper. I think there's a rubbish at There's one. He's got very gem. He's got great gems, but that is definitely probably one of his worst. Uh, yeah, Colisi has found himself with a front of, front of a newspaper. Nothing yet about that. I misquoted so, him. Sorry, I misquoted him. He said, never find yourself on the front page of a newspaper that you don't want your family to read. That was, I apologize. So, of course, well, uh, it can be, it can, when they're supporting you, of course. <laughs> yes. All right. You know, Eric, I understand, uh, but here's the issue. There's nothing that was a normal conversation. What I told that councillor on the 12th, 27th of February, Rob Bersoff and uh, 30 other businessmen from the West and from Cape Town, very successful businessmen, asked to see me. And they asked me one direct question. They said, will you go with the ANC in the Western Cape? I said, at the moment, my first preference would be the Democratic Alliance, honestly. But as the DA has made it clear that they don't want to work with me, they leave me no choice. If, if you are married to somebody, for instance, you're, you're, if your wife locks you out of the house, she can't complain to where you're going to go and sleep the evening. If she doesn't want you to come in the house, she can't come tomorrow and say, I heard you, 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 went, you went to the bar the whole night, for instance. So there was nothing on your show. I've always said that we are even willing to work with the AWB as long as we understand. So I don't know what is this expose. I don't know what is the DA and report trying to do. Uh, I've read the paper. I've listened to the recording. What have I said there that I've not said on your show, but I've not said on the 27th of February, and that I'm not going to say today? I have said that it's not a secret. I'm currently working with the ANC in many municipalities. Now, I don't know what is this great expose. That is what desperation does to people. 
instead of the DA coming and saying, let's put our egos aside, because I have made nine predictions on your shows over the over time. All nine of them were correct. I said ANC is going to get 37%, and people said I was crazy. The very people that said I was crazy are now saying that the, the ANC is going to get 37%. So I'm saying to you, now, I'm not the only one to, the DA is not the only one to blame for the, the solution of our relationship. We are equally to blame as the Patriotic Alliance. Uh, and the DA is also to blame. We, there's no innocent party here. We don't want to play innocent. But I think for the sake of our country, we need to get together and leave whatever we said about each other and just see because if the DA still think they're going to hold on to Western Cape, I'm here today to come and tell them they are not going to do that. Let's try to find each other now and see how all of us can make sure we keep the ANC out of the province. Gaten, there's a, an article in the Financial Times of London this morning, our partners, uh, and we've reproduced it on Biz News, in Biz News Premium, where the headline is opposition parties are bickering. Now, this is not just a... Uh, financial, an overseas perception, it's also a local perception. But the key thing here, and perhaps this is where the issue lies, is that they reproduce polls that say they don't even mention the PA. Now, I don't know if you can just unpack that for me because I'm very confused. I believe in science. I believe in the facts. And the facts on the, on the by-elections are showing me that the PA is most definitely not a nothing party. You, you winning seats, you're getting substantial increases in the ward votes, and either that's a one-off or something's really gone wrong here. But potentially the DA membership and leadership are saying, well, we don't really have to worry about Gayton and the PA, and we can say anything we want to about him because they're not really a factor, and the polls tend to be su supporting that. So help us out there. Are they wrong? I, not only are they wrong, they are horribly wrong. Uh, I'll give you three parts. Let me unpack it three parts to you. 2021, nobody gave us five seats. No one. Not You can go to Brenda's Foundation, you can go to SRF, you can go to all these polling people. They didn't even mention us 2021. We were the official breakout party of 2021. We got 86 seats. Now, they didn't see us coming. They saw people that got five seats. They saw people that got 10 seats. They even saw people that got 20 seats. I didn't see us. So this is not new territory for us. This does not shock us. The same mistake they made 2021, they are making it this time also, but just on a bigger scale. Let me show you. Pol politics is very emotional, and political commentating is even more emotional than politics itself. Politics itself. Now, why am I saying this? Let me unpack something for you. Follow the science. Follow the facts. I can say this. Zuma can say this. Helen Zeller says that. We're all saying things that makes us look good. We're all saying things that puts us in a favorable position. The, fact, the science doesn't lie. Scientifically, we have taken more awards than anybody from the ANC. We've taken more awards than anybody from the Democratic Alliance. Oates Warren for me was, Dasseldorp for me was, uh, uh, unmasked the DA heavily, that the words don't match the action. On the 24th of April coming, in the next two weeks, there's a by-election, a major by-election in Dasseldorp. We have a chance to unseat the ANC. It's an ANC ward. The ANC has been strong in that ward. The DA decided, no, they're not going to be take part in that ward. There's Five other by-elections, they're taking part in it. But in the Western Cape, have you ever imagined the DA in the Western Cape not partaking in the ward in Oatswaran? And I would love to hear somebody ask them, why are you not part of that? But here's the last point I want to make, Alec. I'm the fly in the ointment. I, I don't get controlled by big capital. I don't get controlled by, you know, my stance on Israel, people going around saying, yeah, Zionist funding has made him change. <laughs> has made him change. All of that. People make all sorts of suggestions. I have said no to big monies. I've had people coming to me and say, we're giving you 
15 million because we give that party a certain amount of interest. It's fine. So let them underestimate us. I'm actually angry that some people are starting to see there's a problem here. This guy is going to do well in his party because our superpower was always to be underestimated. At the conference, you said, don't worry about the rhino, think about the brain save the brain and uh, and you've got those lovely those lovely turns uh, of, of phrase. But when we talk about the brain o, and in, particularly in the Western Cape, the coloured community, which is the majority demographically, are are they coming to your side? And if that is the case, and what you've just mentioned about Dasseldorp is is, uh, is pretty instructive, then surely there has to be a danger of the DA having to talk to you after the election because you might even, um, well, you would certainly uh, need to be a partner in some coalition because if they don't talk to you, potentially you could you could have a coalition with somebody else. What you said is it's just logic. Logic that some of your listeners don't want to understand because I always go through your comments. It's just logic what you just said now. Listen, I'm not getting all the... There's, there's two parts to it. The first part is that between 2016 and 2021, the DPA lost a third of the voters in Cape Town. That was just not wishes. It's there. Google search is there. They lost a third of the voters. Those people didn't come to the Patriotic Alliance. They didn't go to any other party. They just had for the deal. So there's the first element of your the diff, of the ordinary voter that loved the day, that said, I'm no longer voting for you. Then you get the second part, where you have a party like NCC, the National Colored Congress, you have GOOT, you have PMC, and you have the PA, and you have Freedom Front Plus. These parties are each taking a bite at the DA, any action. They each taking a bite. Someone has to take bigger bites, some take smaller bites. Here's the issue. You see how bad the DA has been treating, let's say, Rice and Zanzi, making, running, decampaigning them, SMSs. Now, what they've done, that's wrong. If they so much say the ANC is their enemy, then everybody else that's fighting the ANC is supposed to, they're supposed not to fight with. Because anybody that helps you to eat this elephant, I will never criticize good. I will never criticize the... Uh, NCC. I will never criticize PMC for now because they helped me eat this DA elephant in the Western Cape, for instance. If you if you get on and say, why the DA is calling small parties, insulting them, calling us mercenaries, calling people this, calling people that you are enemizing us, you're making us the enemy. The DA has been lying for so long to people and particularly your listeners are eating lock, stock, and barrel, all the nonsense they hear from the DA. The DA is in serious trouble, in tremendous trouble. They lied last time. They said last year they lied, and they said the reason why they're not part of the by-election in Kensington, in Cape Town, was because there was an oversight. Somebody made the mistake. That's impossible with the DA. They've never in the history made the, Nobody makes those, those. That's the most elementary mistake you can make, not to register. Your listeners believe them. Now, I wonder what the excuse is going to be in Dasseldorf, because it's in the Western Cape. I want, to, I want to just go forward to after the election, because there's, you almost as a member of the public, you can almost understand. Gaten's going to say this, John Stianazen's going to say that. Afterwards, you say, oh, sorry, guys, it was just politics. It's like, you know, you're playing rugby on the field, you get off, you shake hands, and, and you move forward. But in your case, you've made three very distinct, not negotiables. And maybe go through them with us as well, because I'm interested to see what political parties you would be coalescing with after May the 29th if you stick to those three not negotiables, and I presume you will. I was never going to change this three. I think number one for me is uh, bringing God back into the classroom, into the workplace. You know, people don't know this, but... Uh, God is no longer central in the everyday life of South Africans. Our children, I look at my kids, they don't even know the Bible. We used to be taught Bible school. No young kid is just going to take a Bible and read it on their own. They would rather take a Harry Potter book. So we have a duty as parents to teach our children the Bible, and that's the first thing 
God must take it, you know. I, I watched the inauguration of Joe Biden, and what struck me is every second sentence, God bless America. Here in South Africa, you don't hear the, those things uh, being loudly and shouted from the rooftops. That's number one. Number two is, for us, illegal immigration is a massive problem. It's a non-negotiable also. We want illegal immigration to 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 happen. Uh, to, 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 to the people that we want illegal immigration uh, not to happen. We want mass deportation of all illegal immigrants. So there must be no illegal immigration in South Africa. Number three for me is the one that I think your listeners need to sit down and think very hard about. EFF is, uh, 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 they want to nationalize and they want to expropriate without compensation. They're going to put the ANC in a corner to say, do this if you want to remain in power, which will leave the ANC. It will leave the ANC with two choices. Choice number one, I, 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 I lose power totally. Or choice number two, I will adhere to the demands of EFF. Now, just for 20 seconds, Malema is extremely strategic. Don't look at him like he's, he's, a, he's, he's a stupid man. He's not. Malema, in 2016, did what no one has thought he would do, but he did it in preparation of 2024. 2016, Malema gave his power to the Democratic Alliance. They didn't see what he was doing. He was criticized, including by me and everybody else. The ANC was shocked. I spoke to Paul Masatile. He was, he couldn't believe it. He was like a man that was dazed. How could ANC, the EFF give power to? But they wanted to show the ANC that come 2024, if you don't date the year and make Floyd Chuvam the finance minister, we will give the power again. Now you know it's possible. If you get my point, I'm trying to make. They would. They, that was just a dress rehearsal to say, we are not action essay. Action essay is in the corner. They came out and they said, we will not work with the with the ANC. There's two major parties. You either work with the DA, you work with the ANC. Action essay said, we will not work with the. So the DA knows they got nowhere to go. The same was Freedom from Plus is in the same corner. That's why the DA treats them rubbish, but they don't have anywhere to go. With Gates and the PA, the DA treats me like rubbish, I go to the ANC. Now the ANC has treated us like rubbish. We can talk to the DA again. People say, oh, you're flip-flopping. No, no, I'm just not wanting to be a willing participant of an abusive, in an abusive relationship. So, number three. Malema is clear he wants the finance minister to be Floyd Chivambo. Anything those boys touch, they bankrupt it. They were in charge of Limpopo, they bankrupt it. They were in charge of the Youth League, they bankrupted the Youth League. They were involved in anything they get involved in, they bankrupt. EFF, leadership. Now, here's the main point. They want to expropriate without compensation. Caton, on a deeply personal level, because my family lost our land and people, my grandparents, them were evicted, I would last to expropriate without compensation for if revenge or, or some feeling. But that's not possible. As a businessman, as a successful businessman, I know one thing about business. I am an international investor. I've invested in countries around the world. Once you lose property rights, you have no country left. Once you lose property rights, nobody's going to invest. There's going to be no FDI, no foreign direct investment because property rights is the cornerstone of investment. So I'm saying a non-negotiable for me is to make sure that property rights get respected. That for me, Alec, is what we stand for. People are just being fear-mongered about the PA. I believe in a free market system. I am a businessman. I run businesses. So I'm not going to come here with revenge tactics or, or wishy-washy uh, ideologies. I've got many other uh, manifesto points, but this one's, you can't have all your things. 
those three for me, God, illegal immigration, and the property rights, it's, it's fundamental. The country is going to collapse, I can promise you. Once you take away property rights, Zimbabwe next door is the best example. I was there when they took the farms. The very same people are now paying the white people to come back. Now, it's not about white. It's about farming. It's like job security. So we are also emotional and, oh, I don't like Gator. You need to like me. You need to check what I'm standing for. I, 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 I have a problem with EFL for what they are standing for. I like Herman Mashaba for what he's standing for. Uh, I'm the furthest ideology-wise from Corny Mulder. The furthest. They want to keep independence. We have to keep independence. I don't want that nonsense. But I have to sit down with them. Now, the problem I'm having is parties that just want it their way. And that's where Zuma is a danger. You have you have to compare the two lead. There's three leaders in 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 in, in, in after 2024. You got Zuma that will run the Black Pact. You've got the Moonshot Pact, which is Tianazen, and then you've got Ramaphosa, which must also put together parties that that is aligned to him. Now Zuma's got some, and he's a wily old cat. And he doesn't have arrogance about him. He's got, he's got. I once said with Zuma, that's the best example I would have made you. We were busy eating, having a meeting. And then he asked me, do I know how to, how to send a plea, how to answer, please call me. I said, excuse me, president. He says, no, somebody send him a please call me. He wants to phone the person back. I said, who's the person? He says, no. It must be somebody in the village that has a problem. I was sitting there. There's some calls I don't even answer. Zuma's asking me to help him to call. I saw the police call me. And this I'm saying live is fake. You're going to ask him. I saw the police call me. Now, it shows you about the deep humility that he has. And Zuma's got many mistakes. I can tell you that for a fact. But I'm saying that I mean, putting together a government of national unity, you need to have charm. The ANC didn't want a guy called Martinez van Scalve. He called him Korbrook. They were left with, how could Korbrook become a, I think he was like a deputy president or something of sorts. And Mandela came back and he says, no. Now Zuma possesses the charm of Mandela. So John Stevenson is the wrong guy to lead. Stop fighting rights from Zanzi. Stop fighting Action SA. Stop fighting the PA. To be honest with you, the PA and the DA, Raisam Zanzi, actually as a field from plus, we are natural fit. We can unseat because the Moonshot Pact doesn't have the numbers. I don't care who says what. Let them not say they're going to unseat the ANC. Let them show you how much they're going to get. Then you do your maths. They need us and a few other parties like Bosa, like Raisam Zanzi. Then there's a real chance of unseating the ANC. But this arrogance... All our guns should be aimed at the ANC, including the PA's guns at the moment. Because they're the government. But we are fighting each other. And, and I'm not trying to be Snow White here in this matter. I'm equally guilty because I've allowed them to bait me. Like, if they say something, I say something back, and then there's a quick escalation. But I'm on your show today. I'm putting my hand up. And I said, let's have another meeting, not on John Stearnazer's term. But all of us, let's get together and let's take somebody as level-headed as Courtney Mulder or Sabisa of the IFP. They are my rivals, but they're very level-headed, this gentleman. Let us sit down and say, how are we going to unseat the ANC? I know what John said about me. He called me a green gangster and Mitchell's playing. I called him uh, a head boy. If I said to him, he's just a privileged head boy with rich parents. That's why I became the head boy of the DA. Uh, but I'm saying today, this is my olive branch. And if I don't lie, particularly not on air, that's a fact. I would never come here and tell a lie. So I can be held to what I'm saying here today. We still have a few weeks because after 2024, we will not be the same person 
that I'm now. Because it's why now this sudden you see how much I got, now you want to talk to me. I wasn't good enough. So I'm saying, one, the Moonshot Pack doesn't have the numbers, Alex. They don't have the numbers. There's, and they're, you know, they could have reached 40% together. But the wrecking ball called President Zuma came. And I don't care what they say. He finished IFP. Half, he halved him. Oh, he'll take 20% from him. Let me just say 20%. It's a loss. Votes from a party, 20%. Now, you must be an imbecile to think Zuma's not going to take from the IFP. The IFP says Zuma's not taking from them. I will never believe that in a million years. He's taking from EFF. He's taking from the ANC. Those three. He's taking them. His Zuma was no factor. As they all say, he's not a factor. Why are I jumping up and down to courts and trying to get him not to contest? They, they need to learn one thing. And I've seen white people have never picked this up. The DA is doing that to me now. And uh, the DA is that dead to the DA. Black people has always been victims. Colored people have always been victims of this system. We've never really enjoyed the fruits of freedom. Of freedom. So we love victims. We identify with victims. Because we see ourselves in any person that we perceive to be victimized. Zuma's currency is always to find himself in the position of being not a victor, but being victimized. He's found himself a month before the election, again in that position. Oh, they don't want Zuma to compete. Oh, they send Zuma to jail. It is very calculated. So, what a day is doing to me, Ellen Wendy gives out flyers that, that not knowing what's really happening on the ground, that I'm one person that picks on the drug dealers in our communities. And he goes and say, Mackenzie gets money from drug dealers. Now people look like, the drug dealers hate Mackenzie. We see what he's doing on the thing. Now they don't understand the dynamics. So I'm saying, and I don't blame John Stilazen. The last thing I want to say on this matter is that John Stilazen is toast if he doesn't make this deal. He's not going to survive. After I can tell you for the first time on your show, we do speak to people in the theory. That says to us, wait, we're not going to do as well, but we're going to rebuild without Helen, without John. There's those voices, I'm sure you've also heard those voices, that that has got no ego, that is pure intellect, speaking to us and say, don't judge us now, judge us after this, because this DA is dying. I'm saying we don't need even to go there. Let us get together. My friend asked me yesterday, he says, Clayton, will you work with a day after the insulted you like that? I said, for the sake of the country, we'll have to. Whoa, great stuff. Clayton McKenzie, the leader of the Patriotic Alliance, and I'm Alec Hogg from Business.com. <laughs>